seeing all of you. I'm seeing almost very few of you. <laughs> but I hope you are there. <laughs> and thank you for sharing the next 20 minutes with me and listen to my opinions and what I have been doing in my work with children. I really appreciate being able to, to share with you. So thank you all. And please, please don't go away, even though I don't see you. Well, uh, I'm going to talk about resilience. Uh, I want to speak about the Icelandic situation and how it looks, uh, or how I feel it. And I'm going to talk about my work with children. Uh, well, we could say um, the Icelandic crisis, I have chosen carefully to say the economic change of 2008. As you maybe know, people talk about recession uh, when their neighbors are losing their jobs. It's depression when you are losing your own job. But as both my neighbors and myself, we are keeping our jobs. So I am talking about the economic changes of 2008. And uh, to support my opinion, I want to tell you a little story. And now I'm trying this thingy. Oh my God, it's working. <laughs> oh my God, thanks. <laughs> I want to, to I want to tell you a little bit about my family. Well, my mother was almost born in a, a farm like this, in the northeastern part of the country, where we could say a hardwired resilience is governing. It's just as simple as that. I was born 1957. Oh yes, this young lady. <laughs> 1957, thank you. And we started our springs or summers like this, where we lived, my parents' farm. But because of economic growth in Iceland, we left. A lot of farmers all over the country, especially in the isolated places, they completely lost everything. They moved away from this hardship to the cities and left their farms and they started with empty hands again. My family, we moved to, to Akureyri, but there was no work for an old farmer. So we were so lucky to have this Icelandic herring windfall. I looked in a dictionary. It's called the herring windfall of Iceland. We called it adventure or something like this. This great new economic change of help, having all this heading. And my father, he went there and worked, trying to build up a new life for his family with a sick wife and five children. But then the adventure was over. And again, my family with empty hands and all those uh, speculators of the Icelandic herring windfall, of course, left the country. And no one knows where they are today. Not for the first time. We have seen this before, my friends. <laughs> my father, the proud old farmer, the sheep farmer, he started as a worker in a wool factory. And there he ended his, his life and in really short story, but as he stopped working because of age of 70, this factory and the whole uh, factory world of the city uh, collapsed. And where we had all those factories, we now have malls, you know, the shopping malls. So this was a story of my family. I remember when I was 17, experience the nation in really something we can call a crisis. An eruption threatening the most valuable uh, fishery harbor in Iceland. And we continued. I was a grown up woman, again and again, experiences, experiences, 
and experiencing, oh my God, can I switch to Icelandic? Is it okay for you? <laughs> I would love it, thank you. But I experienced the sorrow for this nation losing people over and over again. This is nothing new for Icelanders. I remember the inflation of Iceland, the economic changes again and again. And 1984, when my friends, more than one and more than two and more than three, lost their house the, and lost everything, just like my father did two times in his lifetime. I mean, economic changes in Iceland, what's new about this? I even remember when we took two zeros uh, from our uh, currency. And when I was 22 years old, this was the most, most valuable banknote in the whole of Iceland. You could survive for a month just having one note after we removed the two zeros, you know. Today, you can't even buy a ticket to a movie theater for this one. So maybe we will Maybe our good government will give us a new banknote be before this year will end. Who knows? <coughs> but then we had this strange golden season when money came floating just like the herring before. <laughs> and we didn't have the herring windfall. We had, what shall I say, the banknote uh, windfall or this strange believing when we thought this will never end, just like the heading before, it will continue and continue and continue. But it did stop. So this symbol of debts, private debts, on the Icelandic or the Reykjavik airport with our church behind the debts, of course, it ended just like the heading before. And again, speculators went away with our money, as I said, but we, re <laughs> we replaced the jets with those Icelandic geese. <laughs> and in fact, I do like them better <laughs> than the private jets, I have to admit. I was really happy, 2008, and I said, well, I feel like I'm having my nation back. This is more like the Iceland I knew before. But those years of private debts and magazines and floating money and people just asking me to borrow them, this was so new for me. I didn't like it. So we reclaimed, with the help of the geese, our old Iceland. But I'm an educator. I have been working with children for 25 something more years. I counted every now and then, you know. And I feel like a person able to show resilience. I have been working for 22 years with educational ideas, sometimes really in negative debate and with a huge criticism for my nation, sometimes with a good support. I have been continuing doing the same thing, saying the same all over again, singing my old song once again for 22 years. Just like my father stood up again and again and continued and survived. But my feeling is that those strange uh, years of the golden age changed, changed something in this nation. We started to believe that this new Iceland for a few years was something real. But once again, just continue. That's what's ahead. See what we are going to do, how we are going to solve our things. And my greatest fear is that our children will not get the opportunity of training resilience because, because of lack of adversity. I think the right word is adversity. I googled it. <laughs> Some kind of uh, hardship or so to say. Can you please not if you are agree? Yeah, adversity. We need some adversity to grow as people, to develop 
our best functions and be the best persons we can be. Uh, 22 years ago, in one, ki one kindergarten, I started with pedagogical model based on old Icelandic beliefs, among other things. Uh, the most uh, discussed part of my pedagogy, we can say, is the single sex settings where we are having boys in boys' classes, girls in girl, girls' classes, to be able to train both sexes in all human qualities. Because I believe that discrimination and lack of equality between boys and girls, men and women, are, more, are, are among the most threatening components in everything that can destroy our democracy. Why survive? Why continue? Why always take up and start over and over again if you cannot believe that we are striving for equality in this society? And we need to take the weaknesses of the boys' culture, for example, being too able to take risks. It was the weaknesses of the boys' culture that drove the last uh, catastrophe and the catastrophe before and before that. Weaknesses of the boys' culture. Lack of sympathy, lack of all of those soft qualities. But we also have to take a look at the girls' weaknesses and the women's weaknesses of being too, too able to wait, too able to give the responsibility to some others and so on and so on. So we are giving both girls and boys possibilities of training all human qualities and that's our method to, to reduce the risk of the weaknesses of boys' culture and girls' culture. It's the same for my five or eight years old as it is for us in this hall today. Are you following me? Yes, yes thank you. <coughs> we need to master our own lives and they have to begin in the very beginning. Children have to make choices every day in a systematic way so they know that every morning, every moment of the day, I can choose what I'm going to do. I can change my mind. I can ask different and even difficult questions because I will choose my life. I'm not going to follow what is happening and so on. I will make my own choices. Creative solutions. In our kindergartens and schools, after being with only one kindergarten 22 years ago, we are now working with 16 organizations. We are working in nine uh, municipalities in this country. We are having 2,000 children in our care. You are not going to see them work with traditional uh, toys, not one of them because they are creating all of their own solutions, they are creating their own place, they are learning to create their own life. We are never giving them the solutions, we are never giving them uh, ready-made things, things that some grown-ups thought out. Never, never ever. We are training them in this great adversity, I will be pretty good at, in this word. So I have one more in my vocabulary after this speech. Thank you. <laughs> but being able to continue, uh, bear and tolerate a little pain, a little adversity. And you can feel even though your toes, even though they're hurting, it's quite okay. They could just smile and continue. That's our life. And, that's how life is, and I can say to these girls, well, my girls, if this is the most, the, the, the highest grade of suffering that you will take in this life, <laughs> you are lucky. 
So enjoy it. Enjoy it. <laughs> Feel the cold, and I even take them into the snow and in the lava. Scream a little bit, but continue and enjoy it. <laughs> Never to surrender. If you are going to build this house, even though you are six years old, do it. You will find out. Maybe a little help is needed, but more or less, do it. You can do it. And then practice discipline. That's something really important for the boys and for men also. To know what is righteous or justice for me and where, uh, where is my space and where will your space start. So training discipline. It's not hard for the girls. They are pretty good at it, but the boys. It's not the same. <laughs> and being optimistic, that surely needed. That's a huge part or component of the resilience, according to my understanding of this concept. Being optimistic and believe that things will work out well. You have to research and find out about the world. And mistakes, they are so positive. It's so great to make a mistake. I mean, how are you going to practice something new if you're not allowed to make a mistake? Uh, once I was working with uh, five years old boys and they were having lunch and one of them uh, had a full glass of milk and spilled it over, you know. It went completely over the table and over the floor, and he was so shocked. And he looked at me, and I, I saw how his eyes was becoming uh, musty, and his lip started to shiver, and everything. And I started with the same sentence as I always use. This is quite okay. This is happening all the time. We all spill our milk. That's no problem. And well, he raised his head again. And, and I said, think about it. How lucky you are today. Spilling all of those milk over our floor. Did you know what the nuns in the old hospital in Reykjavik did? They washed the linoleum floor with milk. So, in fact, your little mistake, it's so great. <coughs> and our floors, they are more than happy today. And the old nuns, I, I, I think I need to contact them and tell them about this. <laughs> and he said, oh, oh my God, what a great idea. <laughs> I, I think I will always wash the floors uh, in my home when I grow up with milk. <laughs> and then he looked at me and said, Oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to let my wife do it. <laughs> you have to experience and find out about the world. You have to be responsible. You have to do your own things. Don't wait for people coming and saving you. Do something yourself. You're able to do it. And with the help, from a friend, it will be easy enough. But never wait for a salvation. Find about for yourself. Train your courage. It needs courage to continue and show resilience. Show courage and train it. And we are training with simple things like just jumping from a table, even though you are a little afraid of it. Courage is not doing things and being, not being afraid. Courage is doing things even though you are a little afraid. I mean, it's not my favorite speaking in English, you know, but I decided to do it today. It's a courage training for me. We all have to train our human qualities. It's not only for kids. And then tackling difficult tasks and of course, I'm trying to show you uh, untraditional uh, photos of boys and girls. But training difficult tasks and not always praise kids for everything. 
be realistic. Let them tackle tasks even though you know they will have a little hard time. And not praise them if they haven't earned it. That's also something that was part of our last economic change. <laughs> Concern and cooperation is also what's needed and part, in my opinion, when we are talking about resilience. I mean, take care of yourself, but also take care of your next. We are not alone in this world, and we are not meant to think about what I want. I have to think what's best for both of us or for all of us. And then my last word, because my time is over, and I promise to, to cut down two minutes, but I didn't manage. Kauri, maybe you will. <laughs> <laughs> you gave them some nice word about it, but I was ah, reluctant. Ah. But real justice and equality, if we are working in a society not striving for equality, for girls and boys, men and women, for all of us, independent of our situation, if that's not the society we are striving for, then I don't want to show resilience in that kind of society. Thank you. <laughs>